Hi, my name is Irina Swanson and today I want to show you how to make Thomas Fireblocks very efficiently and accurately, either in the regular color scheme or in a scrappy look. Uh, the block was redesigned by Scott Griffin from the traditional Perky Omen Valley blocks. Those have uh, triangles also in the center and are usually smaller. And both the Perky Omen Valley block and the Thomas Fire block have one half that is dark and the other side that is black. I will show you two methods today and with the first method we will make 12 of these blocks plus 12 of these almost identical blocks but the light and dark triangles are switched and we will make these 12 plus 12 blocks with only 74 seams total which is just two seams more than three seams per block. That's very fast. In the other method, we will make 24 of these uh, Thomas Valley blocks with 116 seams total, which is fewer than 5 seams per block. Each block has 11 pieces, so traditionally it takes 10 seams to sew these blocks, but uh, we can make them much faster, but we have to make more of them. Uh, at some point, my method switches to working with 8 blocks at a time. And for those eight blocks, if we're doing the 12 plus 12 version, um, we get four of the Thomas Fire blocks and then four of the blocks in which the light and dark is switched. But in these eight blocks, the squares all have the same colors. And then the, the next eight blocks, they could have the same colors or different colors. And in the, the third, group of eight blocks that could have another color scheme and so in that case we can do a lot of mixing and matching if we choose those squares differently and we can even combine rows in which light and dark are really opposite but i will talk more about uh, scrappy looks later <clears throat> so in any case we will uh, the squares are done in three batches so we need three strips of this corner, three of this, three of that, three, 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 three. So we need 21 strips. For the uh, uh, strips, so three times three strips that determine these middle colors here, middle squares, cut the strips from selvage to selvage at strip width four and a half inches. Um, and for these other four uh, blocks in three times uh, four strips. You need to cut three times four strips, again from selvage to selvage, but cut them a little bit wider, four and a half inches plus an eighth of an inch or four and a half inches plus a quarter of an inch, so that at the end we can trim down. Okay. Um, and how about for the triangle uh, fabrics? Whether you're doing a scrappy look or a regular look, uh, you need four dark and four light strips cut at strip width three and three quarters of an inch, and the strips have to be at least 43 inches long. You'll see why soon. So here are my uh, four dark and four light strips. You can see that I cut the green ones from selvage to selvage, and I cut the gray ones from leftovers from some uh, quilt border. You sew these strips together, scooting down by three and a quarter of an inch. Uh, and then you press the seam allowances any way you want to, and then cut and, uh, at exactly 45 degrees. And because of the scooting, this waste is minimal. Let me show you how I do this cutting. I take a ruler, and it doesn't have to be quite this long. And then I slide my 45 degree ruler, a large 45 degree ruler, along here. I make sure that the edges are together. And then I check that all of, sorry, all, pins are in my way, that all of these angles here are indeed 45 degrees. If you do not have a large 45 degree ruler, take an ordinary piece of paper, fold it in half, and I have a 45 degree ruler, and now we can slide it this to see 
if we have 45 degrees at each uh, angle. If we don't, tuck the fabric this way or that way so that you can make uh, uh, cuts with all of these angles, 45 degrees. All right. Once uh, we have this trimmed strip set, slanted strip set, we want to sew this edge to the edge on the other side. The edges are straight, so the seam will be straight, but because of the offsetting, there is a little bit of twisting, so I will explain in more detail what this uh, seam is all about. So this is the seam, straight, and then at some point it starts twisting, so I readjust, and then I sew the next straight part, and readjust, so everything is a straight seam, even though I cannot make it, ugh, it, it just doesn't want to be in a straight the whole way. Why are we making this seam? Because remember that um, we want to, uh, why are we making the seam? Yes, uh, this is the seam. When we open the seam, we want here this to be a straight line here. So where these two fabrics come together, that's exactly at the seam. So while we're making the seam, where this fabric is coming down and that fabric is coming up, they form a V here, and that V should be exactly at seam allowance. Uh, don't try to match along the edges. You're matching the beginnings at seam allowance. Right. And remember that the... Um, the top edge is unbiased now, so be very careful, do not stretch it. Uh, we do have to press this latest seam, so first on the back side and then turn inside out and handle by the sturdy part, not by the bias edges. And so this is a primary wide tube. Now how you position it, if you position it in this offset way, and then if you want to make cuts, we will make cuts, they will be twisted. So do take time without stretching this bias edge here to uh, make all of these angles that will make the cuts again 45 degrees. So um, these uh, here is a wide tube already cut into narrow tubes and um, these edges here are the tops and the bottoms of the block, so we want to make them a little bit bigger. So rather than cutting these at four and a half inches, if we can do it a little bit, if we can cut them a little bit wider, like four and a half inches and an eighth of an inch, that would be great. Obviously, if our fabrics are not wide enough, uh, we're not, if the strips were not long enough, then our tube wouldn't be wide enough, so we couldn't use this tube. And because everything proceeds in pairs for most efficient use, we wouldn't even be using this tube. So you really want the strips to be long enough. And then you may want to measure. You want to make sure that the usable part is at least 27 inches. And I had more than an inch extra. So I cut mine at four and a half inches plus an eighth of an inch. And so once you get six of these tubes or however many pairs you have, each pair will not give eight blocks. All right. And so now we want to start making strip sets. And uh, so we have to convert all of those narrow tubes into strips. Where we cut the strip, the, the tube into a strip doesn't matter so much. Well, of course, you don't want to cut it down the middle of a triangle that destroys a triangle. You want to cut it uh, through a tip here. And notice, or, uh, or here, I already cut it here. If I, were, I, if I had plenty of room, I would have cut my, uh, I, possibly I would have cut my tubes even wider, in which case this, this uh, edge here would continue higher. So mm, if I did a cut through a, a tip here, it wouldn't go through a tip on the other side. So then we have to decide if we're making these cuts across through the tip on the this edge or along the other edge. Right. But 
with width four and a half inches, four and a half plus an eighth of an inch, the tips are pretty much horizontal. And the way I cut it, obviously slide a little uh, uh, a cutting mat inside, or you fold it at tips and then cut with a large, scissor, a large scissors and so on. So here is one of these tubes cut, and we got a strip. Okay, so now we can start making strip sets. Here is a strip set for the top row. Uh, dark, dark, triangle. So this row looks right. The next row doesn't look right. It belongs into this group. The next row looks right again, and so on. So um, this is the top row. Here is a strip set for the middle row, and here we can start building a block. I'm using these blocks the same. And then the bottom row, here, it's like that. So here's a strip set for the bottom row. Okay. Uh, this middle row is very easy, so let's talk more about the strip sets for the top row. So I like to position both of them this way because now the top row has a companion bottom row. The triangles are just right. The next row is a companion to the next row here for these blocks. The next row is a companion to that for the Thomas, Valley, the Thomas Fire blocks and so on. But when I cut out these strips, what if I happen to rotate it this way. Well here it's not a big deal. Let's look at it on a scrappy version. So in this scrappy version I started with four distinct dark triangle fabrics and four distinct light triangle fabrics. And so here I I'm doing them in parallel, but what if for some reason I decided to rotate it this way? Now this bottom row is no longer a companion to this, this top row. I have the blues are correct, but my light uh, is not right. That blue light combination is in the bottom, and when I sew that, well this is part of the Thomas Fire block, but this is not. This belongs there. So in case you're doing a scrappy version, make sure that you combine, or if you want the corner triangles to look the same, you want to combine these. But if you want very scrappy uh, look so that um, triangles in the corners don't look the same at all, then maybe this uh, Thomas Fire block could be merged with uh, this one, or maybe it could be uh, this could be the third row for that block and so on. So lots of options for uh, mixing and matching for scrappy look. So once we have the strip sets, then we cut them apart. Each strip set for the uh, top and the bottom rows makes eight rows. Here I'm only showing uh, four uh, top rows and here only four bottom rows. In the top row, the this tip has to be down here so we want to cut at a quarter of an inch below this tip below below so whenever you see the tip make a cut a quarter of an inch below that um, and instead for the bottom rows we want the cut to be a quarter of an inch above the tip so here we cut above the tip above the tip above the tip by design, these rows are wider than four and a half inches so that we can then trim them up a little bit. And I didn't bother trimming now, I will trim later. So these are wider than four and a half inches, but for the middle row, we have to cut these rows at width precisely four and a half inches. And here we see the first waist. Uh, we can get nine rows, but we only need eight of them. Okay. I will take two of these rows, 
to the next step. Here is already the top and bottom row for one uh, hummus fire block. And, and here is the companion. If we're doing the 12 and 12, we'll also be getting these. And then it's obvious what you have to do is sew these rows together. For ease of sewing, it's easiest, it's best if when you're making the strip sets for the top and bottom rows, if all the seam allowances point in, and for the middle row, all seam allowances should be point, pointing out, uh, then it's much easier making the blocks. And once you sew these blocks together, then by design they're a little too big, trim them down to 12 and a half inches. Uh, so that the blocks will be 12 inches big. If you're making a um, scrappy look, you can mix and match. All right, so this is 12 and 12. And now I'll show you a modification if we only want to make 24 of these blocks. So uh, we go back to uh, those triangle rows. And rather than just having a row, we now cut it apart into um, pretty much squares, depending on what your width was. And um, if we still sew the strip set for the first row, so we sew these two together, and if we're going to be building the top row, this uh, square is oriented correctly, but the next one is not. So we have to rotate the next one not 90 degrees, but uh, 180 degrees. And then when we sew, we just flip all of these over. And similarly, we flip the, oh sorry, we rotate um, the the next one, and so on. We rotate all of them, so now darks are next to the darks. The same orientation also gives, uh, we can also make the bottom rows, and these are already positioned accurately. All right, so in case um, you had very wide strip sets, then you have to pay attention where you're cutting through the tips on, along this edge or in that edge. All right, so this shows us how to make the top row. This shows us how to make the bottom row. We already know how to make the middle row. We know how to sew rows together. We know how to trim the blocks together. And so we get these 24 blocks very fast as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode on making Thomas fire blocks. If you want to see more about uh, using tubes for efficient sewing, please visit my www.tubepiecing.com.